everyone and welcome to our watercolor lesson this week. I wanted to do something that was sort of anti-cultural at this moment in time, <laughs> De depending on where you live, obviously, but um, so many people view this time of year as sort of chaotic and frenzied, like there's this rush to get to this certain day and make everything special and perfect, and a lot of us feel that stress. And um, thinking about it, and I was just writing in my, my journal the other day um, about art and about rushing and about um, watercolor in particular, a lot of times people look at watercolor as a swift medium because it dries quickly. So you feel like you have to work fast, right? Um, and I've watched painters work fast. I've worked fast. Um, I've said, okay, you got to be pay attention. You got to work fast here because it'll dry. You know, I mean, it's just it's just part of the medium and sort of something that um, that we come to think about when we think of watercolor. And I wanted to to demonstrate that it doesn't have to be that way. I'm gonna wet my paints here. Um, you can use any paints for this, any of your watercolor paints that you love, the colors that you love. And we're gonna paint sort of a wintry landscape. I'm actually gonna wet this too. And I think I'm gonna wet my Sumi ink because I really love using it with watercolor. Um, and you could also use black watercolor, but it doesn't matter. You don't have to have the colors I have to do this. It's not, you don't even have to paint a winter a winter scene, but you can. You can follow my lead um, if that's what you want to do. So I thought I would sort of demonstrate a way to paint without hurry, to not feel um, rushed, um, and to just let things unfold in their own time. And sometimes that means that I begin without having anything in mind except for maybe I want to paint a landscape, but I have no idea what, it, what I want it to look like, right? And I begin um, seeking a color for the sky. So I start there. <clears throat> and then from there, I just let it unfold and see, and see what happens. So that's what I, I want to show you today. And I want you to try. And it's just such a lovely way to show up to your work. So I have watercolors here. I have water, obviously. I am, you can use any paintbrush that you're comfortable with. I don't know, maybe I'll start with this one. It, do, it really doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna use Fluid 100 paper. I just got my paper order in yesterday and I'm so excited. Now, here's the thing. I used this paper for a while and I really loved it and I kept wishing I had it again. So I'm hoping that using it now is the same experience that I had before. But if you're looking for a really nice paper to do projects on that's better than sketchbook, but not as expensive as really fine watercolor paper, um, I think this is a good one. So we'll see what happens today. I am gonna tape off <clears throat> um, a little section in, in here um, so I can do um, several. Over time, I don't want it to be this big, right? So maybe I'm thinking half um, and make it you know, like half, divide this page in half. Um, but you can do whatever size you want. I would just, I would stay somewhat smaller. I wouldn't go bigger than like a nine by 12. That That's just a lot of paint. Um, and unless you're not a beginner and you just, and you really wanna try um, a big piece of paper, I recommend staying under that size. Um, and remember that the bigger paper, the bigger the paper you use, um, the bigger the brush you need to use. You can't really paint a nine by 12 with a tiny brush, right? You gotta use a, a little bit of a bigger brush to put the larger washes down. Um, so let me, I'm gonna grab a plate and do some taping. And okay, then so I've divided my square into two. You can do any size you want, but I like this. I like smaller things. It's just how I prefer to paint. Um, and I could do two, you know, I could do two and, and practice a little bit more. But I've got a little palette here that I can use to soften my colors um, so I don't have to take them directly from the pan. And I'm going to start with this brush and see, see how it feels. So I'm going to begin with the sky color. Um, 
I mean, looking in this palette, I really like this um, sort of blue-gray color. It's just so wintry for me. So you could use your handmade paints here or regular paints. If you want to make a blue-gray, just take any blue and add some orange to it, right? So we'll see. And maybe, um, maybe a little bit of another gray in there. Mm. And I'm going to start just slowly. You see the kind of round movements I use with my brush when I do a sky? I, I don't know why, but and it lets me skip over some and it just puts a little bit of movement in the sky just with that kind of brush stroke. Um, I like that. And then <clears throat> I can drop in um, if I want an area where it's a little darker while it's still wet, yeah, I do like this paper. I can drop in a little more. But know that you have time, right? You don't have to feel rushed with watercolor. If it doesn't um, respond, it, like if your paint is drying really quickly and you can't drop more in, <clears throat> Then wait for it to dry and drop some in if that's what you want to do. All right, or you can just let it happen. However the textures appear when it dries a little bit is fine. I think I'm going to put a little bit of gold in the sky. Just take a little bit. Maybe a little bit of pink. I'm not rushing. I'm just letting it unfold. I really, I'm not, I have nothing I'm looking at. I'm not trying to make anything specific. I'm just putting down some colors that remind me of a winter sky. And that's it for me. I mean, you might do a summer sky. You might do an autumn sky. That's fine. So I think what I want to do now, <clears throat> just picking up any extra color I have. I think what I'm going to do now is 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 put a little bit of a foreground down and I kind of want to leave some of the white. So what I can do is I can just pull down some water and just sort of let that be wet down here and I think I'll just take a little bit of blue and vignette the scene a little bit. So I'll just kind of a little bit of blue into the foreground so it's a little bit at the bottom and maybe some of it goes diagonally up so it's like a, a path maybe just a little bit of color there and so what that does is it, it just creates a boundary it's not just white right and I kind of like um, that sky color and I might drop a little bit of that in the corner Why not? There. All right. I'm really happy with that so far. So now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to, I'm just going to start another one. I'm going to let this dry for just a minute. 
And I'm going to start another one down here. And maybe I'll do a totally different color in the sky. Maybe I'll start with some of this um, lighter blue. And maybe I'll do a diagonal stroke. Just make it a little bit different. Um, and then maybe some other blue mixed in. Let's come down. And then maybe, maybe I'll drop some white in, in diagonal strokes up. So I'm just using a different approach. I'm doing swift kind of not um, instead of around. I'm I'm going up with it. Just gives a different effect in the sky, right? And maybe I won't soften it down in here. Maybe I'll leave this very white, and maybe I'll put just a little bit of pink. Um, because I love pink in the sky. I really love it. There, that's very different, right? <clears throat> and then down here, maybe there's not snow right now. Maybe um, in this one, it's golden. So I'm just going to put, maybe the snow is melting. So I'm just going to like very lightly bring my brush across and leave white spaces on the page. And then add a little bit of gray toward the edge where the field meets the snow. So I'm just thinking out loud a little bit. There, I like that. <laughs> See how that's kind of gone down naturally. I just want to lift some of it up because it's too wet, but I think I'm really happy with those skies and foreground. So I'm going to let this dry um, because my background should dry, all right? And then I'll come back to it and I'll slowly build up the midground and then we'll take it from there. But the main thing is, is that we just want to take a relaxed approach to it. Right? We don't have to rush. Um, we don't have to know where we're going. We can just sit down with paints and paper and slowly let something unfold. There. What I'm doing is I'm drawing my brush and I'm wicking up anything extra so it doesn't just take hours to dry. And that's all. That's pretty good. That, there was just like a little pool of paint there. Okay, I'll see you when it dries. Okay, so this is dry enough. It's still a little bit damp, but I'm not worried about that. I just don't want it really wet because if I put new color down, it would just rush up into the sky, right? So I just want it to be dry enough, um, damp so it's soft and, and dry enough that the colors don't rush into one another. So now I'm gonna put the mid-ground in, right? And I'm gonna make, well, I'm not gonna make a gray, I'm gonna find a gray. Um, here's a beautiful kind of lavender gray. And maybe some brown. Uh, maybe a touch of green. Just have fun, create a color. Create a color that you love. All right, and then um, I'm going to use a little bit of this color that was in the sky, just so there, there's harmony there, right? I'm using watercolors by Deep Deep Light right now, um, but I, just because that's what I have and that's what I love, it, it's on my table right now. All right, so I'm going to start with my very, very um, back area. So I'm going to put a little extra water into my brush, 
and I'm, I'm using the tip of my brush to kind of, um, that's where my path was. So I'm gonna tip of my brush to make sort of a random tree line, right? And then I'm pulling it down. So it's very much in the distance, very, very pale like that. And then I'm gonna do the same over here and here's the other side. So maybe this kind of comes down here. And over on this side, I might pick up, maybe it comes and the tree line comes more straight up. And I'm just pulling it across. And these trees, they do, they go all the way across the field. And then <clears throat> I'll go a little bit darker, so I'll put a little bit more of these colors in there that I used. It goes a little bit darker as it comes forward. And then maybe um, there's a darker area here comes a little forward so we want to we want to layer this a little bit right and then over on this side um, maybe it's more over here it's just a little bit darker little bit different color right and then what I want to do once I have and I'm going to do one more so I'm going to put a little bit darker in and then go one forward so here's some just a little bit more like that and then I'm going to take my brush it's damp okay and I'm just going to go up and I'm going to soften Every, every edge that touches the land. So my brush is damp and clean. There's no color on it. And I'm just softening those edges, right? Over here. If I need to wash it again, sort of blur it into the snow. And then the same thing here, just make sure it's it's not wet, right? If it's wet, it's gonna cause blooming and it's gonna pull the color down and all that kind of stuff. So we want it to be just soft. Very soft. <clears throat> now, at the same time, I can make a little bit more. I'm gonna put a little bit of green and a little, whoop, that was a lot of green. <laughs> um, and a little bit of that gray that I used in the sky. Sort of similar colors, right? And I can drop in some darker color toward the bottom of things, toward the center, just to give it a little bit of variation. And then even just a touch in, into my distant areas. So there's just some dimension, right? It's not just all one color. Let's keep it really subtle. And I can go even darker more of that gray at the very bottom of these forward. Remember, this is simple. We're not putting a ton of detail in this, right? We're just slowly creating something. Now, I have a feeling that I want to pull like a big tree up right here, like a bear tree. And so like right in here, I'm just gonna take my damp brush 
and just pull up some branches. And I can add to that later. Just by putting the damp brush through and pulling up, it's gonna pull some of the color from that and just look very subtle. And we can add to that in a little bit. See how subtle that is? Now I'm gonna go back into the snow area and I'm gonna put maybe a little bit more color. And then dry my brush and just kind of soften. And still, I just always wanna soften. And then maybe, maybe we work on this. Little path. Just keep it real simple. And then this comes out a little bit. I just want to soften that. I'm always thinking about softening. And I like that. I don't think I need to do any more to that one. Um, except I feel like there's something weird here, so I'm just going to bring that across so they kind of meet one another, right? And again, just sort of soften. My brush is a Chinese brush, so it it does that splaying thing where it... There. And then I can go a little darker. So see, I'm just letting it evolve, and I'm building a little bit darker in here to make it different from what's back there. This, this bush right here is really in front, so it's going to be darker. Okay, now my tree, first I want to go in with the snow and Maybe I'll take a little bit of pink with a lot of water in it. And just soften this whole area. The very back, leave it white. So just very, it's sort of luminous, right? That little bit of pink just makes it luminous that little bit of white paper back there. Now it's just soft and glowing. So this tree, I wanna make it a little bit darker and I'm actually gonna use a smaller brush for that because I wanna make some twiggy, twiggy branches. And so I'll find maybe some brown and put it into my grays that I've been using. And the bottom part of the tree, um, might be a little bit darker where it comes down here behind. And then I'll just come up and just enhance what I already pulled out. Just a little bit, you don't need to do too much. And it's okay if it's very sort of abstract. It's just the idea of a tree there, which I love. Okay, the only thing that I'm, as I'm looking at it, I feel like I wanna go a little bit darker.
just a little bit. Okay. Oh, magical. And it just slowly came to life. I had no plan, right? So let's move down here to this one. Um, I want to do sort of the same thing, but I want to keep the land forms really in the distance. I really love this snowy field here. And I might put like one little bush, but in general, I want to keep things far back. All right, so I'm going to use these same colors. So I use this blue. I'll put some blue. Let me just turn it over here. <laughs> Actually, let's use some of the same gold that we use in the field and the blue in the sky. And then a little bit of the pink that we put in the sky and just make a neutral color, really, really pale. And then I'm gonna go in and the same thing, I'm gonna um, Put a little bit of land mass in the dis distance. Very pale at first, right? Very, very pale. And then maybe there's um, a really distant tree form. And then maybe there's a little more. So just keep it really light and simple. For the, for the dark, dark distance. And then make some a little bit darker. So more of the blue that we used, more of the, the pink that I used, more of the yellow in the field. So blue, pink, and yellow, right? A little more blue. And so these colors, and I'm just dropping it in. So these colors, I'm dropping it in toward the, the horizon line. So I get different variations, right? I'm just kind of slowly. Building up. Okay, and go a little bit darker still. And if I need to, these are very light colors, so I can put all the three colors that we've used so far into this mix. And then if we need to make it darker, I can pull some black or Sumi ink or something like that from somewhere else. But as long as we've got the colors present, we're good. And then I can just really hug the horizon line, almost like just pull the brush across there because that just right at the base. And that just gives us dimension, right? Now if I look at this, do I do I really want to um, add something in the foreground? Maybe. So the foreground plants would be darker, right? So maybe I put Something like right here, coming up out of the snow. So maybe there's a bush here in the foreground. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll go even darker. So I start with the darkest area from back there, and then I, I make it even darker because things that are close to us are darker than what's far away, all right? And that's it. We really, I mean, I could add a little bit of detail in here if I wanted to, like I could take some of the yellow and mix it with just a tiny bit of whatever gray we made. And if I wanted to, I could add maybe a few textures here and there. You don't want to do too much for these kinds of things because that puts stress, <laughs> right? But I could, I could add a little bit of texture here and there. Just a 
a little bit. But notice how I mixed. I just used the palette and I mixed things together, right? To keep it harmonious. So whatever colors I used in the sky, in the field, then I used for the trees and, and everything in the foreground. And the same with this, right? Um, that's a really important thing when you're working tiny like this. You want harmony in, in the work. So I'm pretty happy with this. I feel like I want to make this just one touch darker, right? In here. And then if you make things darker, you can always take a little bit of a damp brush and just soften where it comes to the land. Dreamy. All right, now let's take the tape off and see what we got. <clears throat> if you're someone who paints really neat edges, you obviously don't need to use tape, but I am not someone who paints neat edges, so tape always improves my work. Um, and by the way, I love this paper. I, I remember it now, and I'm really happy that I got more. It's just, just the way I remembered it, I should say. Um, okay. And there we go. I love them. So a simple way to slow down and paint some dreamy landscapes with no expectations and no pressure and just let them unfold as you paint them. Having in mind just some of the principles of a landscape, right? The further away, the lighter, the closer to us, the darker, keeping things either round or diagonal, just simplifying things, simplifying. All right, I hope you enjoyed it, and I can't wait to see the landscapes that you create. It's always such a joy. All right, everyone, thanks so much, and I'll see you later this week. Take care.